this is Aquaman. I'm coming to you with another video review. And today, thanks to the folks at Sideshow Collectibles, we'll be taking a look at the new MMS-191 Iron Man 3 Tony Stark. The Mark 42 Autonomous Prehensile Propulsion Suit Test Version. As seen in the Iron Man 3 movie, Tony Stark embarks on a very long journey of trying to well, fill his time and his thoughts with making a whole bunch of extra Iron Man sort of suits and the Mark 42 was his latest. During the scene, we see him testing it by injecting himself with 40 some different like receptors or something in his actual body that allows him to essentially mentally control the armor and utilize it whenever he wants. As you can see, this box is huge, much like the same scale that we got with the Avengers Hulk figure. Come around here to, oh, and it's also very heavy because it's got the stand and you got that. Come around here to the back and you have a whole bunch of credits the warning choking hazard everything all that kind of jazz and then bringing it down actually it comes all the way down and then it lifts off the top and then when you get it off you have another list of a cast and crew the creative producers product designers sculptors things of that nature a nice image of tony right there now, i can't tell if that's <laughs> the figure or if it's actually robert downey jr but either way it looks pretty good and then when you slide this out of the way what you have are all the various accessories as you can see he comes with his his table a lot of extra parts he comes with one of his mechanical robots now unfortunately it's not dummy or who i like to call dummy if, if you remember from the iron man 3 movie he was wearing a dunce cap <laughs> this is actually the one that was holding the camera that recorded Tony while he was testing the armor and having it basically attached to him. There's where the figure would be. And then when you remove this whole thing, and it's all the way in there, I'm not going to do it, but there's two different levels. You've got this level right here with all the accessories, and then the bottom section actually has the base in which he stood while he was having all the armor pieces attached to him. So this thing is absolutely awesome. I am so excited to have it. There's going to be a lot to cover here, so... Without further ado, let's get down to it and let's see how cool he actually is. All right, guys, so here we have the Tony Stark with the Mark 42 Autonomous Prehensal Propulsion Suit Test Stuff. Try saying that five times fast. <laughs> but this is basically everything that you're getting, and you don't even get it all in frame. But there is a lot of stuff going on here. And honestly, I don't even know where to begin showing everything so how about we just take a look at the stand first and foremost or more specifically the stand and the display piece and here it is now uh, i do have one of these bits right here not attached to it it goes on the back but to be able to fit it into my area here i had to remove this so you do get that bit right there in addition to that you also do get multiple card pieces that are just out of this uh, very thick cardboard that what you do is you will basically put it around here like so you put one here and you do that all the way around it just so that you can actually get a full-on look now again I don't have it all the way on here just because it's a bit of a pain in the butt to do when I have this entire thing set up so just sliding that in there this is basically what it looks like you get the full rounded effect and you do get two more that will go uh, on the back section like so there is some assembly that is required when you put to put the whole thing together like for example i showed you that these pieces do detach the stairs here also do it detach you got pieces here that lock everything together but this is essentially what you have and it is like this all the way around getting out these pieces that's how you uh, have it basically looking now you do have this clear not uh, pillar that you can use to hold tony up you do slide this down and you have this uh it's not the adjustable creator that we're used to but this is adjustable and as you can see this springs open so that you can claw your tony now <laughs> one other thing that i want to mention is see it does it does detach and just lifting that so it's a little bit easier they do have wires throughout it on on this side there's a total of three different sets you are supposed to take these out and then peg them or well you don't really peg them they just kind of lay across here and then they peg inside here 
I prefer to actually leave them dangling from this. Uh, it, it is a bit of a pain in the butt to get them to actually sit in there and not look goofy when you're doing it. So getting that back together, you can see there's more wires over here. So just in general, it, it's absolutely a beautiful display piece. And the real cool thing is it actually does light up. It requires three AAA batteries and it goes in the bottom of the center piece here. And then you have this button right back here, which is a little bit hard to actually get to, but you just push it down there and it's kind of hard to see, but you see that it does in fact light up. Turning off my lights so that you can see it better. It does light up very nicely. And like I said, it's just an on and off switch, but that's an absolute beautiful touch. And I really do dig it. That just really makes the thing look so much cooler in my opinion. One thing that I'm not 100% sure about, uh, down here on the bottom, I don't know if I can find it. It's along this side right there. It looks as if, and it's very hard to see. Let me see if I can loosen this whole bit up. I don't want to, when, when I want to separate it, it won't separate. There we go. I'm just going to set this off to the side and just remove this. As you can see, this little bit right here looks like it actually has like an AC adapter plug, which would make this so much better as a display piece if I could actually figure out what kind of adapter that would require to get it to actually stay lit up instead of using the batteries and wasting the batteries. That's very cool. And if any of you hot toy experts know, please let me know by sending me a message privately. You don't have to send me a comment or anything like that because odds are I probably won't see it. If you do send me a private message, I would really appreciate it because I would like to get one if that's in fact what that is used for so that I could always have this displayed on and looking just absolutely cool. Now he also does come with one of his mechanical robots who I am calling Dummy. Now, Dummy is the one who would always seem to get in trouble and kind of annoy Tony. But this one specifically was used to record while Tony was trying on the Mark 42. So here's his camera and zooming in so that you can take a look at that. This is an absolutely wonderful looking camera. I mean, you can see a very nice uh, clear piece right in there, very reminiscent of the lens. Very simple, but you do have it opening up and you can sort of see a, a reflective surface right in there, but really very nice. You got the red button for record. Uh, it does look like that's a blue button or just another button just in general. So really very cool detail on here. Absolutely love that little accessory. And this guy is really ridiculously articulated. I mean, you can see all the detail throughout here. He does have wheels that do rotate and you can see that they spin that way and they also rotate all the way around. So you can really get it doing whatever you want it to. Uh, if you wanted to position the wheels in such a way where he was able to spin, uh, he absolutely could do that. Coming down so that you could actually see what I was doing. I mean, that's what you're basically looking at. So, I mean, that's really very cool. He also is articulated here. He will rotate 360 degrees at this base set centered right here in the middle. Uh, that doesn't do anything. He does move forward or well, hold on. Let's see. Does he Let's see. Well, yeah, okay. So that's what that he does move like this at this joint. And you can see all these wonderful wires. He also does move up and down on another piston. So you can get a nice range of motion going on with this guy. It's really very cool. And then angling it down a little bit more. You do have it rotating. Well, it doesn't rotate there, I don't think. I don't know, but it rotates right there now because this wire is attached you can only go a certain distance from around but you do get that rotation right there it does have a joint right here moving up and down it does rotate back and forth here and then this bit right here does spin all the way around these little finger sort of things do open and close nicely and you can take it and all you'd have, really have to do is put the camera in there just to get them to hold it and it doesn't peg in or anything. It just kind of holds it by friction more than anything else. So you do have to slightly be patient with it, but doing it like so, I mean, now you have him going around recording or well, making it so he can record here. Let me, let me see if I rotate that around like that and then do it like that just to give him an actual base maybe to stand on. It's, it's, it's delicate to actually do, but uh, you can do it. It's, it's, not 
too bad. I, I do wish it kind of pegged in there, but you can't have it just sitting there and held on there fairly nicely, but really very cool. And again, a very accurate representation of his mechanical robot. Uh, I, I Like I said, I wish that it came with a dunce cap because that would be absolutely fun to, to use with this. But I am glad that they did include something that this can interact with, that being the camera. <laughs> Now that's not all. This guy comes with a slew of additional accessories that you see here on this table. Now we'll get to that in just a second, but much like all the other figures, he does come with extra hands, uh, several extra hands. These are just his regular hands. These are kind of hands that are used if he was gonna be using tools or something like that. And then he also comes with a pair of fists. Now these are just straight up humanized, skin and fleshy kind of hands. He also does come with two additional pegs, just again, in case anything breaks. Uh, and I have complained about it before that I do wish that they would come with at least one peg for every hand that you get. That's just a nitpick of mine. And then oh, so many other kind of hand bits. As you can see, this is the Mark 42 armor hand. Uh, this is specifically designed, again, like what we saw with the Mark 7, where you would plug it in on an angle and then utilize this extra bit right here that goes up so that you can have the, the repulsor blast like so. And then these fingers here are all individually articulated. The fingers move just like so. You got a ball joint here in the thumb. So you got actually two hands, a right and a left, that are like that. And actually, now where's the other one at? It's it's somewhere here. Is it? No, that, that's, is that it? No, that's not it. Maybe it's this one. No, it's not that one. Um, I swear I thought he came with two. Oh, yeah, it, it's on the other hand right there. So he does come with two of these hands that are in this angle. He also comes with two of these bits right here that are angled up. So that's one bit. You can get this leg back up there. Or, oh, no, that actually went up there. Uh, he does come with two regular hands that are just straight that also have the articulated fingers. So you get that additional pair of hands right there. And then, like I showed before, he does come with the, the, the regular arm guard that will just fit like that over it. So there's that for you. Now uh, let's see, he, now here's the, here's the other hand. Oh, well, what, which one's this? Did I already? Actually, if, if you notice, uh, this is the regular. I, I, I don't know if I showed this off. He, he does still come with two of the hands. I just had one on the, the other arm. But he also does come with what I believe is the Mark 7 arm or hand. Now, uh, the rest of the stuff, I mean, is pretty much Mark 42. But you've got a hand that represents the Mark 7. You also get an additional head that you do have the light up kind of glowing feature here although uh, I don't see anywhere where you would really use that it's just a, a reuse of the head but again this is the mark 7 head in addition to that you get a mark 7 faceplate so these aren't all that accurate that's one of my nitpicks I suppose I really do wish that it came with the more accurate mark 42 head as well as the mark 42 faceplate so that's really kind of unfortunate but I really do like the detail on here and zooming in you can see that's absolutely wonderfully detailed on the inside I really think Think that's cool and then of course you can see through the eye so very nice detail on there but again mark 7 the way that you can really tell is the mark 42 doesn't have this red bit right here or something of that nature but there's the face form he also comes with two just regular fists in the mark 42 color scheme that you can see again the the difference that you can tell is the the gold on the thumb and the finger so you got those and they're just straight on ball joints that you can attach these you can't do anything with the light as you can see that's filled in whereas like these ones are uh, clear so there's his hands for that oh and then so much else i mean here here you have that extra arm and this is actually kind of funny because all of these are magnetic that's how it attaches and i'll show it off here later in a little bit but this bit right here just magnetically attaches and that's how you get the arm to basically display on your Tony Stark figure, which is really very cool. So you do have that. You have two of them where you have this and then the other magnet, boom. And then I don't have a hand on there. So, so we're going to need one of these bits right here. Just rotate that on, get that all the way in there. Come on. Aren't you going in? How, which way do I have this? Oh, I have it backwards. There you go. So just push this all the way in just like that. I was having a hard time with it. And then you just take the ball joint or the, the ball or the hand, like I said, it is on just the ball joint, just 
pop it in there just like so and that's actually upside down so I'll put it like that and then you have the the two additional arms which will replace his regular human arms but again we'll get to that here in just a bit so setting these off to the side oh so much so much else he has uh this i'm guessing an extra bit that just i think is his leg one one of these bits right here it kind of looks like it and then you do remember that in the movie that it's a very much a, a kind of panel expansion sort of thing so you got the blaster right here the propulsion all of these bits are self-propelled and they all go flying and then they hit the target and they basically morph into this that's essentially what you're looking at with this bit right here then you have the arm that at least again i'm guessing it's an arm that's where the thruster would be and then it would go in thruster it would hit them here and then just expand outward to what you have here so you got that uh, you do have an extra neck guard right here it's a uh, very soft rubber and then an extra shoulder bit again all parts of the mark 7 set that back up there he does come with a magazine with tony stark on the cover and zoom in so that you can see that uh, i think this is more designed for uh, iron man 2 is it's got the spark or i'm sorry the stark expo time to change the world tony stark and when you open it up there is actually stuff written in here really very cool genius billionaire playboy philanthropist naturally that's where he got the quote when he was explaining what he is to captain america when you take the suit off that's what he is and then all this stuff in here absolutely amazing and if i could get a magnifying glass i could probably read all these words but super cool there's the stark expo you got them all dressed up nice there's the arc reactor tech that's the mark six really nice there next page off the suit all the various things there he is racing uh, you got the armor up and then what's next for tony stark and what's next for iron man so very cool flip around here on the back your money never stops growing it's a it's an advertisement so really very cool that they thought to include this but i, I don't really think that it was actually on the, the table but it is still nice that they have it now these you could vaguely see that these were on the table they are blueprints here and again zooming in so that you can see that a little bit better uh these specifically look like they're the mark seven uh you can kind of make it out right there mark seven prototype there are various blueprints for that figure stark industries yeah mark seven prototype so you have the the blueprints for that which just sit on the table there's uh, nothing on the back of these or anything so you can just set these here fan them out do whatever you want and then he comes with additional tools he comes with a screwdriver nice detail uh i wonder if that's metal actually i just did the tap it on your tooth trick and yeah that is metal on there so it's a very nice screwdriver he also has two uh bits of wire you got a red bit and you got a or i'm sorry a blue bit and a white bit that just they're just wires and then he comes with a pair of needle nose pliers that do open and close and again these bits are metal as well so really very nice there and then a bit of uh wire cutters which are a little bit harder to open they do open a little bit and then they close uh, that might be just for safety reasons i guess so there's that like i showed you he does come with legs which i will show you how to attach these um it's it literally just a matter of sliding in there i really do wish it was a different way of uh attaching these but we'll get to that here in just a minute and then because you can't have legs without feet you got a, another set of right and left feet and then again you can see where all of these are like these panel bits because as i said all this went and then formed out these panels so it's really very cool and then just giving you an idea of what that's going to look like there you have it and then like i said there is a lot of paneling that you can see i mean i really do dig that so very very cool now setting that there one last bit of accessory is his uh, headset that he can use to control this when he's actually not in it zooming in so that you can see that you got the little eyesight you got the little microphone there and again i'll show this off here it's actually attached to his head but that's really cool that they included that although it wasn't used in this particular scene the most memorable scene i would venture to guess that these were used in was when he was piloting the mark 42 to protect or well save the people that were basically dumped out of air force one he used this to control the suit so there you have that now all that stuff nicely fits on this table except there's one problem um it does come with wheels that you can i'm just gonna take everything off of the table <laughs> uh you got the wheels here for it that just they just peg in there just like so 
just like so just like so um one problem though i was shorted uh, a wheel so i don't have all the wheels for it and that's really kind of crappy if you ask me uh, you, you pay this much money for it you would expect all the wheels but in a situation like this i would imagine you'd be able to contact sideshow collectible specifically which is where i got mine from and they probably could do something for you maybe send you out the wheel or something like that but for me it really doesn't bug me all that much because you can take them off they do detach and you can just set it right there and it's just a regular table so it, it really doesn't bug me too terribly much that it doesn't come with all four wheels but i probably will make the the effort to try to get the fourth wheel just because but all those i mean you could see putting all this in here i mean it's a gigantic pile of accessories i mean there is a, a, a huge huge amount I mean, that's just absolutely an incredible amount of accessories for what you get. And honestly, this is one of my most impressive overall sets that I have in my collection. Now, coming to the figure himself, we still have so much more to go over. And hopefully you've stuck with me this whole time. But the Tony Stark figure is really exceptional, featuring an all-new face sculpt as well as an all-new upper torso sculpt. This guy is truly fantastic looking. Now, starting things off first, we're going to take a look at his face sculpt. And zoom in so that you can see that it actually is a very nice sculpt. Now, some people were kind of complaining about the eyes. I don't think they look all that bad, to be totally honest. I think he's got a very nice, intense look, replicating, at least in my opinion, the look he had on his face when he was trying trying to call for the various armor bits and they weren't responding just yet. That's the kind of face that I really feel that he's making in this. Now, for a comparison of recent Tony Stark kind of sculpts, here's this one. And here's the one that we got with the Mark 7. Now, one thing that you're noticing is it actually looks a little bit smaller. I have to move it closer to the actual camera to make it bigger, but keeping it lined up with the, the rest of the body, it looks like a smaller head, to be totally honest. It doesn't look as as big as the new one does. So that's really very strange. The, the sculpt on this one's pretty good. I like his smirk on here, but it is a very similar kind of sculpt, uh, except the, the hair is a little bit more, like, poofy in this one. But all in all, I really think that this particular face looks a little bit better. Now, unfortunately, you can't swap the heads out, and I'll cover that here in a little bit. But as you can see for the articulation, the head is on this nice ball joint. It goes move forward and back, up, down, left, right, all that kind of stuff. Now, because the upper torso is completely newly molded, it doesn't have that same neck joint that a lot of the other uh, actual human figures will have. And that's really a kind of a detriment to this figure itself now kind of showing you what i was talking about with the, the head if you pull it out you can see that it leaves a ball joint inside there or a, a, a peg kind of thing in here the whole neck is like i said attached to the actual upper torso so this doesn't move or anything so i don't actually know if you can get that ball joint out to be able to really do anything so it is kind of unfortunate now what you can actually do if i get this position just right all right there we go uh, now if i am careful enough i can yeah see you can actually pull you can see that the whole neck thing is right here and this is a soft rubber so his upper torso is a, a softer rubber it gets a little bit harder down here but pulling the whole thing out you, you kind of leave a neck joint but it, it's not the same kind of a neck here and i can't really get that it, it's like the diameter is not the same so you can't really put this on anything else. Uh, at least I can. Somebody else might have a better shot at doing it. But to get this back in there, you can see that there's another ball joint all the way down there. You have to wiggle this uh, piece around the rubber of his neck, push all the way down, and give it a good push till you feel it lock in. So that's really kind of unfortunate that you can't swap the heads out because I would love to use this head sculpt on just like an Iron Man body or something like that. So that really does kind of stink. Now his shoulders here move in and out. One thing that I am noticing is that I can't get this arm, I'm rot rotating it as far around as I can. I can't get this one to go as far down towards the body uh, like his left arm here does. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know, it, it, it doesn't seem to like 
go all the way down where it's like that. So it kind of sticks out and that's kind of weird and annoys me a little bit because you kind of always have to leave it hanging out like that. But they move forward back, they move all the way around. You can rotate the shirt to get more of a full range of motion with it, but you do have to rotate the shirt as you're doing it, which that's not that big of a deal. It does kind of rotate around here at the shoulder. There's some movement rotation wise right up there. The elbows rotate, they move forward back on a very stiff joint. I don't like necessarily rotating it from down here. I like grabbing it up here and rotating it just so it gives a little bit more strength to that peg, which will remove here. And then the wrist here move forward and back. They rotate all the way around. It does look a little weird because you got the, the broken joint kind of thing going on here but uh what, what else were they gonna really do i mean he was wearing short sleeves in the in the movie now he does have an ab crunch right here he does also rotate now the cool thing about his remolded upper torso is that they actually incorporated the arc reactor into the actual torso itself now lifting up his shirt so that you can kind of see it it is a little bit stretchy you can do it. one thing that's actually really cool if uh, you look down here it does say stark industries that's the the brand of the shirt so I'm gonna try lifting this up because I want to show you the actual arc reactor he's got a t-shirt underneath it and uh, actually in order to activate the special feature you do have to lift this shirt up so get this going come on I'm yes I am undressing Tony Stark but it's for a purpose get this all the way up you can remove the shirt and then you got like abs and stuff there but you have his arc reactor built in. He is wearing a t-shirt underneath there, but you can see his arc reactor. Now, to activate it, you come around here to the back, pull this all the way up, and this, again, is a bit of a pain in the butt to do, but you got the battery compartment right there, you got the on-off switch, so when you flip it up and turn it on, you actually can turn on his arc reactor, and then when you leave it on and pull his shirt all the way down, it actually shines through the actual t-shirt, which I, I think that is an absolute wonderful, wonderful touch. That's probably one of my favorite features on this figure. Now, it is in the triangle shape, but it's a little bit harder to see. You can see the triangle shape before, but it looks more round here. It doesn't give the triangle light through the actual t-shirt, which is kind of unfortunate. I just love the fact that it actually even has that. That's really cool. Coming all the way down to the legs, they move forward and back. They are a little bit more limited by the, the pants. That's a natural sort of thing. They rotate at the upper part of the thigh. He bends at the knee. The foot are uh, actually on ball joints, it feels like, so they move forward back, pivot side to side. So wonderful level of articulation on this guy, as you really would come to expect when you're dealing with a hot toy figure. So really very, very cool. Now, we're, we're just gonna start off showing you the arms, because that's probably the easiest to do. Now first, what you do, like I said, you got this, this is the arm that it comes with. It actually does have a light up feature, which when you come over here, that's got the open palm, so I'll sh use that one. You just flip that switch and boom, that lights up as well, so really cool. But all you need to do, and, and again, I don't understand why they really needed to do this. I think it's cool because you can kind of detach all of this and uh, leave this off to the side and you can use this as something that would fly to them to, to attach, but it, it seems weird that they would that need to have that on there but it is a magnet so you do get like a nice range of motion still with it all you have to do come around here give this a nice little tug ah, rotate that out pull that pull his arm off and then you just take this you peg it in there and boom now you got his arm which <laughs> I mean that's cool I totally dig that and again for the other arm again you just pull right out there take this one shove that in the hole that you created locks that in and now you have his other arm and, and again it, it's such a cool look now one thing that does suck that i really wish that they would have included in the actual movie this arm the armor went all the way up to his shoulder now, i don't really know how they could have done that with the sleeve and everything like that now when you actually put the the legs on him you, you tuck the pants in and everything so um I, you might have been able to do that with the sleeve but at any rate that's uh, what you have here. So really a very cool way of incorporating that. And then he keeps wanting to 
bend over and it makes it look like he's squatting. So super cool, really though. Now the tricky part really comes in getting his leg armor attached. Uh, pull one of them out and I don't think that they're actually marked. I mean, they are kind of the same looking. Um, oh no, actually they are marked. There's a little L right there and a little R right there. So this is the right leg, this is the left leg. And that still looks kind of weird though, doesn't it? I mean, hmm. Oh, and there's a big R there and a big L there. So, all right, whatever. But that's his right leg, so we're gonna go with that. So what you need to do for this is come around here to the bottom, actually pull his foot all the way off. It's tough to kind of do, but you gotta pull it off at that joint. Then, taking the right leg, all right, then you just, your, your best bet is to angle down so that you can see what's going on. Take this and kind of wrap this around like so, so that you can feed this through getting as much of the pant leg in there as possible and just kind of push it all the way through to you expose that peg. Then you pull out the, the proper foot and that's not it. This is the proper foot. Then just give that a nice little peg, fold that down, bring it up, and here you have his leg actually attached to him. So getting that angled properly around though. But uh, there you have that bit. And then to do uh, a, a second time, you wanna put on this one. And again, it's, it's, it's easy. But the biggest difficulty really comes in making sure that you get these pants as wrapped around here as possible so that, like I said, you can feed it through here easily. So just do that, kind of slowly twist as you go all the way in, pull out that, pull the foot out, pop that in there like so, straighten this out, and then you can see that you want to get as much down here as possible so that it doesn't bunch up around the knees itself. But once you get it, that's the look. And then you can just come around here, turn the light on there, and, and you can't really see it. But that's uh, basically him wearing all of his test armor. Now, like I said, you can interchange these hands. So if you wanted to have him do a uh, repulsor blast on this one, really all you would have to do is pull the, the hand off, pull this bit off, pull out this bit. Here, let's see. I just pulled the arm off to make it easier, and boom. Now you can have him do the repulsor blast, and that looks a little funky like that, but here, hold on. There we go, get it like that, and then flip the switch, turn that on. Well, if I flip the switch the right way, there you go. And now you can have him do the repulsor blast, which again, really super cool. I love the fact that they found a way to include the light up feature, even in the extra arms. And then for one final accessory, there's the headpiece attached to him. Uh, all it does is really just wrap around. All you do is put this around here, get this kind of on his ears, make sure that these little bits right up here are kind of on his, on his forehead. And there you have the, the headpiece. I mean, it's really kind of strange. I mean, like I said, he didn't use it really during this scene. So having that, I keep blind. <laughs> but he, he really wasn't wearing this when he was actually doing uh, the testing of this suit. So uh, it's, a, it's a nice accessory to have added. It's just kind of out of place, I think. Honestly, I probably would have preferred instead of getting this, if they gave us, like I said, the dunce cap for a uh, uh, dummy. Here, where's Dummy? Come here, Dummy. There's Dummy. <laughs> if we got a dunce cap for him, or even if they gave us, like, the record player that was playing Christmas music, I probably would have liked that just maybe a little bit more. Now, as you can see, you can have a lot of fun coming up with different display options for this set. Literally, the only limit is your own imagination. Just about everything that you can think of wanting is included with this. Now granted, this is the very first kind of diorama set that I've ever owned, but I absolutely love it. And one thing that really does make me appreciate this is that this entire getup really makes me now want to buy those upcoming Hall of Fame, I'm sorry, Hall of Armor display cases that would wrap around the back of this setup. This thing alone has essentially sold me on those extra pieces. And that's saying a lot because every one of those is like $100. And if there's seven suits that are at least displayed in the Hall of Armor, yeah, that's about $700. But that's the biggest compliment that I can think of giving to this. It makes me want to spend more money. I absolutely love it. The display stand itself is really very cool. I love the fact that it lights 
lights up and absolutely beautifully captures that display area from the actual movie. You got his mechanical robot, who I'm going to call Dummy. You got a table, despite the fact that he's missing one of, the, or it's missing one of the wheels. You got a whole slew of accessories, including some that really are from different movies, such as the magazine, as well as the the March Seven stuff. But that's fine. I don't mind that all that much. And the Tony Stark figure itself is the absolute icing on the cake. There are a few things that I wish were a little bit different, like I do wish that at least one of the arms, specifically the left arm here, had all the armor going up the entire way, but I'm, I'm okay with that. That's not too bad. I absolutely appreciate and love the fact that they thought to re-sculpt the upper torso to put the arc reactor in the middle. The outfit is spot on, and that face sculpt, I don't care what anybody says, really is superb. And in my opinion, the best face sculpt that we've gotten of Tony Stark so far. This whole set is an absolute must have. At $280, I really do believe that that is well worth the price. Considering everything that you get, a typical Hot Toy figure is gonna cost you about $220 to $250. You throw in a fully articulated giant robot, a whole bunch of extra accessories, a light up display stand that is really big, $280 is not that bad. And if you use Sideshow Collectibles like I always recommend, you could have pre-ordered this guy when it was first announced a long time ago and use their FlexPay system, which allows you to slowly over the course of the few months pay for this so that you don't have to come up with $280 all at once. That's a feature that blows every other retailer of Hot Toys out of the water. Well, that and the fact that they're the official distributor of Hot Toys here in the United States, but that is the place to go if you want to get this guy. So if you are interested in getting them, go ahead and click on the link down in the video description. You go to Sideshow Collectibles where this guy still is available for pre-order. He'll be shipping soon and is sure to sell out. And once that happens, we all know what happens to Hot Toy figures after they sell out. They skyrocket in price. So get this guy now before he does. But that's about it, guys. So until next time, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optivotomous. Keep in touch with me. Find our recent purchases as well as all upcoming video reviews all at Facebook.com slash TeamBotomous. And follow me over on Twitter at Twitter.com slash And until next time, I'll talk to you later.